All right, so this was made up of like 11 hours of raw footage. giving you guys a heads up that you probably won't understand everything that's happening until like the very end of that video so you know kind of just take that into consideration and I'll do my best to try and explain. Now the first thing to do with tubing the front is to make the mounting plates for everything so I simply laid out some tape and cut out a template for the uh, base plate. Right now I just need to have the mock-up of the front end see where the radiator is at so that way I know um, where to put my bends for everything and where all the tubing needs to go. Alright so basically here's the template done. I got the power steering fluid reservoir and I bolted it up just to make sure that there would be enough clearance here. I went ahead and marked all of the bolt holes and I checked the clearance for having both the thicker one and a half inch tube as well as the thinner three quarters inch tube bolted up and so I got the spacing for that down and now you only really need to make one of these brackets on one side of the car and you just have to make it on the one that needs to have the most constraints on it so the other side of the car it has no power steering reservoir or anything on the shock tower so I don't need to worry about that so basically this is going to be the, the hardest side to make it for so with the template made in tape, I can transfer that to a piece of metal and cut out the uh, masterpiece, which I'll be using to make all the rest of the other templates. All right, so the plate fits pretty good, but over here is kind of a natural bend in the shock tower, so it doesn't want to sit flush on that side. So right here is what we've come up with. All right, so now just go ahead and double check on the opposite side as well to make sure that your template is gonna work. So we're good on that one. So now what I'm gonna do is replicate this three more times and basically just be using this as a template so that way I have enough pieces to go around the whole car. Here are the four done, and then here's one extra. I've already tested with them, they fit nice. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and move to the bottom base. I went ahead and made a template out of tape, so time to go cut this out. Okay, so I trimmed this, it fits nice. Uh, this is gonna get in the way of the welding, and honestly, it's for the charcoal canister which is part of the emissions equipment, which I will most likely not even be putting back anyways, just because I don't want to have all that clutter inside the engine bay. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pull this out. And so now with these holes marked up, I'm going to go ahead and then um, drill a little pilot hole for them. And then based off of that, I'm going to line them up with the rest of the plates that I have and then drill the rest of the pilot holes for those as well. To start off, I'm using just an eighth inch drill bit. Alright, so there's our one template cut out. And now we can just go ahead 
and then stack the rest of them one by one on top, then drill in the same exact spot, and then that way we get all of our base plates looking exactly the same with the exact same holes in the exact same spots. All right, so now I have all of the pilot holes drilled. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the shock tower of the car and get them lined up and then go ahead and drill another pilot hole on there. Now I'm using a 5 16 inch drill bit to go ahead and then enlarge these holes and then uh, my bolts can fit through them. Hurts my wrist. That like hurts my wrist like a lot. What? The? Like well, the other one it bucks so hard. This one it's like the most gentle, like like a kitten. Like, gentle. Yeah. Why does it do that? I was drilling exactly as the other one. Okay, so now I have my holes drilled for the bolts that I'm gonna use, and these are M8 by 1.25 bolts right here. These ones are 20 millimeters long. Uh, it kind of just depends on what you're gonna be using. I might make it a 25. And so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, weld some nuts on the back of these plates. And so then that way, this whole system can thread together. Kind of just like here. Okay, so this is the idea we're aiming for, which is going to be a threaded plate. And so we're going to go ahead and then tackle um, welding the nuts onto these pieces now. So now it's, uh, you know, just basically prepping for welding, which is, you know, flap disc, you know, rub it down with acetone. And same thing with the nuts, flap disc, acetone. Now here's our plate right here. This one's going to be welded to the chassis and the other plate is going to be bolted on top. So in the end it's going to look something like this. And this is where the tubing is going to be welded onto. So when we want to undo it we can just go ahead and then unthread these bolts and then take it off and then put it on. Alright, so now we're going to use a step drill bit in order to cut out the holes in the shock tower. And we're basically cutting out holes in the shock tower big enough to get clearance for these nuts to sit flat with the weld around them. So as you can see here, we're gonna need about like that big of a hole and that way the, the weld with the nut can go ahead and sit in there perfectly fine. Bruh, that is so sexy right now. Beautiful. So this is basically the layout that we're going to have for the bottom bracket. And so now I'm kind of just going to mark up where the holes are going to go for the bolts. And then just make sure, you know, I'm going to have spacing with where the tubing is planned to be going. Yeah, we could have just put this here. Made a right? little. Put a center punch. Yep. Drilled it. Yeah. Done. Oh my god, it just bent it.
That's beautiful. It's beautiful. We of course just want bare metal, so you know just a wire wheel on a drill. What I'm gonna do now is kind of just tack it in place, and then once everything's solid, then I can start laying down continuous beams. Alright, well on this side I could weld with my right hand and it was fine. This side I had to use my left hand and I took patches in between and then when I would start over I like did another line sometimes so it's like I had to redo the run like oh my goodness so. Okay now welding on the frame rail was like the worst welding I think I've ever done in my life. Self-taught of course and I think uh, that was like maybe the fourth time ever doing like a big project welding. So this is how it came out. See like these beads were nice, this bead was nice. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, but then it's like over here it was kind of like, it's kind of got messy and then over in this corner I like, there was so much stick out on the welder just because like the nozzle can't even fit down into where it needed to weld. Alright then though, so that's welded in place and that's finally welded in place. All right, now that that thing is tacked in place, I can go ahead and run longer beads throughout the whole thing and get it welded in. And then uh, this way, it's not gonna pull up on me or anything like that because it's tacked in all over. That is actually extremely difficult. Oh boy. See, that's I just dropped my new mixtape. That's why it's on fire. And then of course I went and started welding on the shock tower and then this happened. Son of a m son of a <sighs> Okay, this is the beat I just did. This thing like buckled over here. You see it with the shadow? See how the shadow comes right here? Like right here? It looks like a, it's a pretty sick bead though. So yeah, the uh, the noobness in my welding is definitely starting to show right now. And no matter how much I've already talked about, you know, sheet metal is going to distort when you heat it up. I still manage to do it. Live and you learn though. Life goes on. That looks sick. Son of a mother. Alright, so this is our finish result. Uh, it looks like the thing buckled over here. Then when I stopped, I started again. It wasn't buckling, and then it started buckling over here, and then it stopped over here. So it has like a buckle, not buckle, buckle, not buckle it looks like. I'm not happy with that at all, just to let you guys know that is not the standard that I approve of. I'm actually really disappointed that that even happened in the first place. What can you do though? I mean, it's this. I mean, it's done. So it's one of those things where it's like you can, you can either you know what I mean, fret about it and you know make your rest of your life miserable looking back at this one little thing, or you know what I mean, you can take it as a learning experience and move on from it. Still, when I compare it to some of the other work that I've seen, this is like ten times better as far as execution and just the welds in general. So because of that, I'm still proud of myself. However, do I think I could do way better? Of course I do. Alright, 
So for this one, in order to prevent the warpage that happened on that side, I took it super easy and I did really small beads at a time. So this is the up close of how this one came. Still hot. The bottom section here is the hardest part because there's a large gap to fill in. And on top of that, I can't get the gun in at the right angle. And over here, I did a whole bunch. So now that everything was welded in place, it was a matter of grinding down some of the welds. And I'm not grinding down the welds to make them look better or anything like that. I'm just grinding down the welds so that way the base plate can sit on top of it and sit flat because some of the welds come up onto that uh, surface and so it doesn't sit flat. So I had to grind down some of the sides of the welds in order to get the plates to mount together perfectly flat. All right, I got everything trimmed and all of the uh, plates gone ahead and bolted up. So now I just need to take the measurement for uh, the tubing that needs to go over here to here, which should be good. And now I'm just going to, because I get it in eight foot sections, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, do it at four feet, which is going to have a ton extra. So what I did was I took some of this eighth inch rod and I basically just bent it up to what I thought I needed the bends to be and everything. And then I basically just went ahead and bent it and I got this shape and I basically just had them super long and extended and then kind of just trimmed them down to fit. So basically this is what we got to do. So I really only need more like three feet but I'm using four feet just so that way I can have the extra to cut off and get it exactly to where I want it. With all the slack out of it and go ahead and zero the thing. Okay, so now what we've done is we've taken our degree gauge and then we basically just, you know, measure the degree on here and then match it up to make sure this was like a uh, 90 over here. So that way we can uh, get our bend at the right angle, you know, so that way the uh, metal isn't skewed to one side or another. And also as far as this goes, this is basically just pushed in as far as you can until the die starts hitting. And that's basically our uh, unit of measurement for where the second bend should start. Uh, swag money, this is basically, this is it. Alright, so you can see now the bends are pretty much identical, so I'm going to go ahead on the other side and see what we can do. Alright, now you can see we have it locked up right here, which is basically how we want it. So now you can see the excess that we're going to have to cut off. Also, just a quick tip, I uh, deburr the metal every time after I cut it. So you can just take a file or a deburr tool. All right, there we go. Okay, so I've gone ahead and gotten uh, both sides to fit uh, very similar to each other. So now it's just a matter of uh, welding it up. And of course using tack welds because you don't want to fully weld anything right now. You're still designing your stuff, you're still you know, changing your components, stuff like that. So just tack weld everything in place. So we were so close, except this goes out to the fender, and this one pulls like in with the fender. Alright, so as you can see this one comes more out towards the fender, and this one is more even with the fender and follows the line and comes in. And you can see how much that thing turns, and you can see how much farther this one goes. So basically we need to go ahead and adjust this and bring it this way, and then compensate over there. Where is he a neighbor or is the gardener for the neighbor? Alright, so now second time we did it, you can see it gets just a little bit closer. It gets just a little bit yeah, it gets just a little bit closer over here. This one gets a little bit closer. These things are looking good. Spacing is better. Yeah way more symmetrical now. 
All right, so basically this is what we've come up for the headlight and fender tube. And so basically the headlight is going to bolt over here as well as the uh, fender. And now there's basically just one bend over here. And we were going to do another bend to drop it down. But um, the Harbor Freight bender that we use for this can't really do compound bend that close to another. So because of that, we're going to go with this design, which is basically running another separate tube up, welding this to there. And uh, you're basically just going to have to cap it off. It's also like a very common practice that I've seen when tubing the front that a lot of guys will actually, instead of bending this down, will run a tube like this. All right, so basically we're going to go ahead and replicate on that side. Now with the sand inside, the tube isn't going to, you know, flat spot and compress when we go ahead and bend it. So I kind of already did it on the other side, so I know what measurement to use, but basically I'm going to go for 16 and a half inches. So I have my mark, and that's going to go directly in the center of the die. Alright, now as you can see, the mark is in the center here, and that's for 16 and a half inches where I want the center of my bend to be. Also, I have a piece of sheet metal inside of the... Um, die for this just to take up the extra room and on top of that I'm running sand inside of the tubing. Alright, now we want to get to 42 degrees. Um, the, the floor is 2 degrees over, so technically if I go over to 42 it's actually 40 degrees. But it's not actually 40 degrees because there is some spring back on the um, tubing. So when I undo it, that is actually where it's at. So right now it's actually at the 40 mark, which minus the 2 degrees that it's off on the ground. So technically this is 38 degrees right now. I'm about to flip out. I'm about to flip out. I'm about to flip out. Are you kidding me right now? What was that? Are you kidding me? We need a better ground. Okay? We need a better ground. Okay, now that thing's gonna weld. Finally. Ten minutes just to do that. Oh my goodness. Go ahead and weld the backs over here. I can weld underneath. Really good to that. I'm just gonna point out like the versatility and having that thing removable. Like right now, if I wanted to redo that whole front end, I could do it and still have that one left over to switch off from. So technically I can make two of them right now. And then if, uh, if it ever got smashed or anything like that, quickly you can just unbolt the old one, bolt the new one on right at the track and be good to go for the rest of the day. Like seriously, the front, I'm holding the front end in my hand right now. So 
so I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's actually a lot of time that is put into that. A lot of holes were drilled. There's uh, actually like, it's really, really difficult. There's a lot of trimming involved in order to get the tubes to sit right and fit how you want it. And honestly, this video makes it look ridiculously easy, I think. It really does take quite a lot of time and quite a lot of effort if you want to go ahead and plan it correctly. You can also not make your front end not removable. You can just weld it. You know, you just weld a plate to your shock tower, weld a plate to your frame rail, and then weld the tubing to that. You can do that. However, um, if you ever do smash your front end, you just welded roll cage material to sheet metal. And so, guess what? That roll cage material is not going to bend. Your shock towers are going to get screwed. So that's the point of making it removable. It gives it more of a chance of survival because you have bolts attaching it to it and it's not welded all the way around with some thick plate. So that's the point with making it removable. That's the point for making it weak. It's supposed to absorb impact and it's supposed to be replaceable. All right, so that wraps it up for this episode. Now I'm waiting to do the rest of the front end, which is going to include mounting the uh, Koyo radiator in place. I also have Extreme Dimensions Arrow coming in, which includes um, you know wide front fenders, aftermarket front bumper, as well as an FRP hood. So that's all going to get... Uh, hopefully all mounted and adjusted with that. Okay, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Thank you guys for everything. I hope this helped you out in some way. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, and I'll answer it. That is, of course, if you do have a reply button under your comment. Subscribe if you like, you know, all the videos and everything like that. Give it a like if you found it helpful. That pretty much wraps it up. Today I'm wearing a Keep Drifting Fun shirt. Always a good company to support, so... All right, I'll see you guys next time. Smack that all on the, <laughs> all on the frame. Smack that. All right. Give me some pain. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some. Uh, where's your little sock? Little sock. That's the rapper who made that song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like thought you were serious for this. <laughs> <laughs>